Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Forex PNL where we focus on making big profits and small losses. Today is the 16th of July 2021. It's um, 7.04 p.m. Um, the markets closed about two hours ago and um, right now I'm doing my weekend analysis uh, for the upcoming week starting on the 19th. So right now I'm seeing about 18 currency pairs that are giving, showing me some form of, would I say, structural levels to kind of keep an eye on going into next week. So um, I would like to share that with you guys. But before I even go into that, first of all, I would like to say a very big thank you to every one of you um, who has been, um, you know, liking, subscribing to my channel. Okay. And um, right now we are sitting at more than 1000 subscribers it seems like yesterday when i opened this channel guys uh, but you guys have shown me um so much love and uh, well i really appreciate it and uh well i promise to continue giving you guys um quality content um at least the way that i see the markets and right now let's go into the charts um now going into us dollar swiss francs right now i'm looking at the monthly chart not much really changed okay um well price is still looking as if we are bouncing off of that area i'm not really getting the amount of um, pullback that i would um want to see in this pair actually like we anticipated last week uh i wanted price to give me a test of um 0.9200 which the market's bid pretty much um tested 0.9200 and gave us a push to the ups to the downside pretty much giving us um, a new low taking off this previous low that we have at this level um that's a good sign in my opinion however i really wanted price to give me some push lower at least into this um demand zone that we have on the four hours time frame okay right around um, 0. Point, let's say 90 80 area and also maybe even a, a little push below that level towards 0. 0.1950 that's kind of the price action that I would have loved to see on this pair. But well, um, the markets, you know, chose to do something else. We got the push down and then from there, the markets are now pushing again to the upside. Um, key levels to keep an eye on in this chart right now will be right around this bearish origin. Okay. Where this whole sellout started. It depends on how the market opens. If the market opens, let's say, and we start pushing to the upside, uh, I would love to see maybe this highs to hold and um, you know for price to give me another push to the downside manipulating below these lows into those demand zones that we have on the um, four hours time frame now anywhere from here if i begin to get reversals to the upside i'll be looking for opportunities to go long for further continuations to the upside now um as mean things just you know they don't go that way and let's say price just continues to shoot to the upside okay taking off this uh, previous level of uh, resistance that we have here and uh, well um, from here, you know, I can zoom into the smaller time frames and start searching for demand zones that form in the smaller time frames for potential continuations to the upside. But right now, my preference is going to be for price to give me that deep into this uh maybe these highs or even from right around here if we can get a, a push to the downside from here that's fine as well. But let's see if price can dip into this um bearish origin and then give me another push to the downside before we get any form of reversals. That's the kind of move or price action that I would prefer to see. But again, you know, the market has the final say. This is just the way that I'm seeing the markets based on the levels that um, I have right now on my charts. Okay, now going into British pounds, US dollar. Um, this pair again from the monthly time frame, not much is um, really going on in my opinion. But um, I noticed something that I really that really caught my attention. If you notice right here, back in 2016, okay, this is a clear supply zone that we have on this chart. You can see how we had a very clear break of structure to the downside, all right? And um, from there, you can see we got price to give us a pullback into that supply zone, all right? And from here, you can see how price gave us that push to the downside. Now, um, keep in mind that this push to the downside did not take off this low. So this right here is not a supply zone. Um, if anything, this is the supply zone, the last supply zone that we pretty much um, have on this particular chart, okay? That is holding price right now. But remember, this level right here is a demand zone. You can see how we took off this previous level of um, structure that we have on our charts to the upside. You notice how price dipped into that supply zone. And uh, from there now, we are beginning to get some rejections off of that area. So in my own opinion, this is something just to keep an eye on as we are, you know, going into the smaller time frames because um, this level is still valid. We have we are yet to break the supply zone so it will not be impossible for price to give us some serious uh push to the downside maybe into this 
monthly demands zone area from where maybe price can make, make a decision as to whether to continue to the upside or whether to continue to the downside. But at least I want us to keep this in mind as we you know analyze the um, the charts in the smaller time frames for this particular currency pair and actually for some of the other um, British pounds and crosses as well. So chances are we might be about to see some serious push to the downside. Okay, in this particular case, it will be driven clearly by this particular supply zone that we have here on the um, on the monthly time frame. So something to keep an eye on. All right. So right now, zooming into the weekly time frame, from here we'll notice that uh, well, um, the demand zone is still holding price. Okay, um, we got that first bounce, and now we are slowly getting our way again into that uh, demand zone. Um, this particular week, ah, not much information in the weekly candle we have this demand zone and well let's see how next week candle opens do we get a push to the upside before maybe price continues to the downside into this demand zone only time we tell but um personally i would love to see price give us that dip next week into this demand zone from where the markets will have to make a decision whether to continue to the downside or whether to give us some form of reversal from where uh you know markets are probably going to give us maybe another push to the upside into this supply origins um before you know will determine whether we are going to get a break or whether price is going to give us a reversal to the downside only time we tell all right um but um that's basically what i'm seeing from the weekly time frame in a uh, british pounds and us dollar now on the daily time frame notice how we are now forming this is a supply zone that we formed here as a result of this break of structure. Um, I anticipated last week that maybe we are going to get some, some form of manipulation to the upside uh, before price continues to drop to the downside. Uh, well, that manipulation did not occur, but um, we noticed that price again continues to drop to the downside. Right now, from where price is, not much can be said because you know we are just sitting between the highs and the lows of pretty much this range that we have right here so well um price needs to make a decision do we get a push to the upside maybe to fill up some of the um, supply zones that we have on the smaller time frame from where price might give us another push to the downside okay to create new lows manipulating below these previous lows all right and then dip into that demand zone from where maybe we'll have to wait to see how price behaves if we are going to get that bounce to the upside um keep in mind this is a supply zone that um I'm keeping an eye on but at the same time i'm also keeping a very strong eye on this supply zone um if i even if i'm going to be going long on this pair from right around here i'll be keeping an eye heavily on this particular supply zone right here okay because it's not been tested in my opinion so chances are whenever price makes its way into that supply zone we will at least get some form of significant retracement something to keep an eye on all right now looking into the four hours time frame uh what do we have here let me zoom out so i can see the bigger picture again not much um not much to be said honestly in my opinion i, I don't have much data in the four hours time frame right now to say what i think this pair is going to do so i'm not going to say anything right now as far as the four hours time frame is concerned let's see how the market opens and see if we get a push to the upside and then maybe followed by a push to the downside this is more or less the kind of move that i would prefer to see personally some form of push to the upside and then from there maybe later in the week we get another push to the downside manipulating below these lows that's what i would love to see all right going into euro us dollar now this pair has not been going anywhere in the past four or five months okay we've basically been you know consolidating as far as you know the longer time frames are concerned pretty much something of this nature that is what we have okay some form of consolidation do we remain in this consolidation uh and then maybe get a break finally to either side who knows only time will tell okay or will price give us another push to the downside significant push to the downside into this um, demand zones that we have um, in this area on the monthly time frame okay and then before we get the push to the upside only time will tell nothing from the weekly in my opinion now going into the daily time frame price again made a second visit to the um demand zone that we have here on the daily this demand zone right here you can see how that last week's um low was manipulated and from there now price again um you know bounced off of that demand zone and uh, we are now kind of you know not really doing anything just pay attention to the price action that we've had uh, in this area price has not done anything in my opinion it's just market compression move up move down manipulate below move up manipulate below move up again so 
that is just um, low volume. Nothing is really happening. Um, again, if nothing is happening in the markets, uh, you don't want to be the one trying to push the markets because you and I do not have um, the financial ability to push this market in any direction. Okay, so we have to wait for a clear move from the um, big dogs, okay, from the institutional um, players to push these markets clearly either to the upside or to the downside. And then from there, we are going to now see based on the data we have, which direction the market really wants to go, all right? But for right now, all I can really say is I have demand right here and I have supply right here, not much, okay? And then based on how next week forms, do we get a break to the downside? Then I'll start searching for short opportunities. Do we get a very significant push to the upside engulfing the previous uh, bearish candles then i'll be waiting for pullbacks uh into the demand zones in the smaller time frames for further continuations to the upside that's basically the way i'm going to play these currencies right this particular currency pair right now all right not much to say all right us dollar japanese yen um like i pointed out last week we have this um pin bar with a very followed by a bearish candle formation which is pretty much um textbook setup for the markets to you know push to the downside now so from the weekly time frame this currency pair is looking um bearish now um something happened okay last week if you remember i made an analysis and my plan was to you know for price to give me a, a test of right around 11050 area you notice that um, well price gave us that we test of 11050 area that supply zone that we have had in the 11050 area and then from here uh, I was expecting that price is going to give us a push to the downside. But again, I noticed something that drew my attention to the chart. If you notice, that push to the downside did not quite take off. We didn't make a new low. All right. So when this happened, I came back to my charts just to take a look to see, um, you know, what could have caused this particular move. Because I really expected that this is going to give us a very nice push to the downside, taking off these previous swing lows. All right. But uh, well, that did not happen. And then when I came back to take a look at this chart, I noticed this demand zone, which I did not pay attention to um, last week. All right. So this is a demand zone because it led to the break of this level of structure. You can see how we got a clear break of structure to the upside, creating this demand zone in the process. So when price gave us this push into this uh, demand zone, you notice how we bounced off of it. And now this is the second retest of the demand zone and we are now bouncing off of it. Now, um, that doesn't mean we should go long either because every other thing is pointing to the downside. So we have a price bouncing off of demand zone and at the same time we have price breaking um, support trend lines to the downside. So that is mixed information, all right? Um, the only time I'm going to be confident in searching for trades in this particular currency pair right now is if we get, let's say, a push to the downside clearly taking off this demand zone that we have right here. Then from here, I'll be zooming into the smaller time frames to search for supply zones that form for further continuations to the downside. Um, or if we get a clear break to the upside, taking off these highs, okay? Taking off these highs. That's the only time I'm probably now going to be zooming into the smaller time frames to search for demand zones that will form for further continuations to the upside. Anything between this high, anything between this high right here and this low right here in this pair right now for me is not a high quality trade because i mean price can easily give us a push to the upside breaking this uh retracement trend line well you might say that it's not bullish only for you to go long and this level of resistance will hold and this trend line will now hold from below for another push to the downside okay or you might say okay fine from here we get a push to the upside it's now bullish and then this resistance level can hold all right or you might say okay this le resistance level is holding and then you try to go short only for this demand zone to hold for further continuations to the upside so you see why i would prefer to play it safe and not um, be looking for any trades in this zone anymore until we get a new high or until price breaks below, clearly below this demand zone that we have on the daily. That's basically my game plan for US dollar Japanese yen going into next week. Next up is uh, US dollar Canadian dollar. Well, um, the bulls continue to show their strength in this particular chart. You notice how we continue to push to the upside. However, price is still within that particular supply zone that we have on the weekly time frame but for now um the bulls are showing that they are in control of this market you can see how we got that bounce off of this area okay and from here now um that's 1.2050 institutional price level is now 
holding significantly and uh, well the bulls are showing their muscle in this particular chart from the monthly time frame right now things are pretty much um bullish however we are trading within uh, a supply zone on the weekly time frame in my opinion um you know we are still within that supply zone um, that led to this break of structure so from here if we continue to push to the upside such that we get a clear break a clear break okay above this supply zone then from here i'm going to be searching for demand zones in the smaller time frame for further continuations to the upside into this daily supply zone that i have ahead you know above here all right the, that's basically my game plan in this particular currency pair for the book for you know in order to buy from the longer time frames or next week it's not impossible that we can get a nice push to the downside from here um, into the demand zones that we have on the um, daily time frame and then from there you also expect that price can easily push again to the upside those are the two you know scenarios that i have um, from where i can take um, long opportunities at least from the daily time frame that's basically my game plan but from the weekly time frame right now it is still bearish you can notice that price is still in that harmonic uh, movement forming higher lower highs and lower lows okay um we are yet to take off this level of structure so this is still a lower low even though price is pushing you know seriously to the upside okay so that's basically um, a waiting game right now from the weekly time frame to see if the bulls are going to continue to push to the upside, taking off um, supply zones that we have on the weekly. Now, right now, in my opinion, we have pretty much um, some form of a trend line to keep an eye on, all right? So this trend line is going to be very, very significant, in my opinion, um, for the bears, because if we are going to continue to the downside, if this supply zone here is going to hold, then expect that the bears are going to push this to the downside breaking below this trend line, breaking this demand zone that we have on the daily before, you know, we are now probably going to get another retest of 1.2050 area, okay? So that's basically what I am seeing right now in particular, in this particular currency pair. But uh, moving into the daily time frame, what do I see? Well, a clear demand zone right here um, has been established in my, in my charts. So, well, if we in any particular situation get price to give us a dip into this particular demand zone that we have on the daily charts, then from here, any reversals to the upside again, I'll be looking to ride this thing back to the upside, at least for a potential retest of the previous swing high. That's basically um, what I'm seeing right now on the daily charts. Now, if we look into the four hours time frame, uh, we notice that again, uh, price just continues to push to the upside. We have this previous level of um, resistance or structure, whatever you want to call it, okay? And um, notice how we got this push to the downside. Price finally gave us a push to the upside, taking off this previous level of um, structure. So this demand zone has been formed. Again, even in the four hours time frame, if I get some nice formations and you know reversals from this level, I'm also going to be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside. All right, so that's basically the game plan that I have for US dollar, Canadian dollar going into next week. Now, Australian dollar, US dollar from the monthly time frame. Again, this pair just continues to wax to the downside. Um, right now, it's as if we are probably going to be heading towards this uh, demand zone that we have on the monthly, okay? You can see this demand zone that led to the break of this level of um, structure that we have on our charts, all right? So chances are price is going to find a way to muscle its way into that demand zone from where a decision will be made as to whether we are going to be reversing or whether we are going to get a clear break for further continuations to the downside, all right? Only time will tell. But for now, this is basically what I'm seeing. It's as if we still have some room to the downside for further continuations to the downside. Now. I don't see anything on the weekly uh on the monthly time frame this pair just continues to make lower highs and lower lows making new lows um with any particular opportunity that it gets see how we broke the lows um broke the low broke the low again and you can see how the market actually closed pretty much um at the low of the of the week all right so the bears are in this market however it, it will not be surprising for price to give me a nice push again to the upside i would personally love to see price um, give me a push to the upside into this supply zone area that we have right here um, this is also supply okay so anything in this neighborhood a push to the upside from here between 75.50 and um, you know 75 75 area any reversals from here in my opinion will also be a nice opportunity to start you know loading back those short opportunities for further continuations to the downside that's basically what i am seeing on this particular currency pair right now even if you go into the um four hours time frame you'll notice how well from here 
price actually has made a new low we have broken level of structure just like we did in UCAD but you know now to the downside and forming this supply zone from where um, price can easily give us this area a push back into that um, supply zone and then from there price can easily hold for further continuations to the downside so these are basically levels that I am going to be keeping an eye on going into next week okay um, notice how I'm being kind of careful as to calling um, as to you know saying what is going to happen because nobody knows what is going to happen anybody who tells you for sure that they know where this market is going well I will tell you to run as fast as you can because um, nobody knows where the market is going so this is basically the levels that I have mapped out based on the data on the information that I can see from my charts okay all right now euro pounds played out almost to perfection this week based on the analysis we did um, last weekend okay um, from the monthly time frame not much going into the weekly time frame there is a demand zone here but I just removed it okay for um, you know in order not to clutter my charts okay and we also have the supply zone um, up here that led to this um, break of um, structure to the downside okay we also have actually a break of this structure as well so this is a significant supply zone in my own opinion um, we probably are now on our way into this supply zone okay from, from where the market is going to make a decision as to whether we are going to push to the downside um, you know reverse to the downside or whether we are going to get a break for further continuations to the upside to retest these um, areas that we have on our charts okay that's basically what I am seeing right now and the picture even gets clearer but by the time we zoom into the um, daily time frame you notice how price basically like we anticipated um, for price to dip into this demand zone into the return line of this um, falling channel and also testing 0.8500 institutional price level okay so you notice when price did that i think two days ago price got to 8500 area and from there you notice how the bulls have come into this market and um, in my own opinion uh, i really um see you know price giving us a nice push to the upside if that is going to um pan out the way that i expect um price should probably give me a push to the downside maybe towards um 0.8540 area and then from there a nice push breaking this um uh, falling channel and uh, even possibly trading above these highs like I pointed out uh, maybe a possible test of this supply zone is imminent in my opinion so um, let's see how that goes but um, this is kind of the kind of price action that I would love to see a possible retest of um, a possible pullback into let's say 0.85 um, for the area to fill up some of those demand zones that we have on the smaller time frames before we explode to the upside that's the kind of price action that I would love to see now going into the four hours time frame the picture becomes even clearer because uh, what do we have here um, we notice how upon that test of the um, 0.8500 level we started breaking structure to the upside notice the break of structure to the upside creating this demand zone price takes off to the upside okay gives us a push into this demand zone that demand zone holds and right now what do we have um, price has now given us another push to the upside taking up these levels of structure that we have on our charts and in that process well uh, this demand zone was created and right now what I would love to see is for price to give me some dip into this um, demand zone maybe even let's say 0. Uh, um, let's say 8550 8540 area and anywhere from there any reversals to the upside in my own opinion is a very high quality trade for further continuations to the upside all right so let's see how that goes I am bullish in this pair just waiting for pullbacks um, before I pull the trigger in this particular one all right so let's see how that goes now um, next currency pair is going to be euro yen and I'm going to be starting from the monthly time frame um, what do we have here not much on the monthly um, price is now you know showing some bearish strength in my opinion okay um, you can see how last month closed um, a bearish candle um, by pretty much not much of information but right now we are trading trading around the lows of last month okay so should this candle continue to the downside now that is going to be significant um, in my own opinion okay for the bears but let's see how it goes but for right now in the weekly time frame what do we have um we have this demand zone all right break of structure pullback and now price is trading deep inside that demand zone so let's see how that goes no signals yet you can see that the bears are still strongly in this market you can see the last three weeks has been pure bearish candles so far so no signals to go long yet in my own opinion at least from the weekly time frame uh, i would love to see some form of reversal before i think of going long 
um, in this particular pair from the weekly time frame okay so that's basically what I'm seeing as long as price is trading above this demand zone above the low of this demand zone I am still going to be looking for bullish opportunities at least from the weekly time frame um, that is not happening at the moment okay so let's see how that goes now going into the daily time frame this pair just continues to shoot to the downside all right um, in my own opinion we have some space for price to go fill up to the upside notice how this um, supply zone that we have on the daily has not been tested so I would not be surprised if let's say price is to give us a significant push to the upside to go and retest some of those supply zones that we have um, but that being said it all depends on how the market opens uh, market can easily open and give us a push to the downside first of all uh, let's say from here price can easily push to the upside we test some of the um, supply zones we have on the smaller time frame give us another push to the downside before giving us another push to the upside so just be flexible and flow with the markets um that's basically what i'm seeing right now in this particular currency pair not much okay i don't have a lot of data i wish i did but i don't have a lot of data okay so let's see how that goes i would need for the candle to open next week and let's say for monday and tuesday trading to happen before i can you know now take a look and see the picture or where they want to push the markets for this particular week all right so that's basically it for um euro yen next up is going to be british pound some japanese yen now um i noticed something in this particular pair as well i would not necessarily call this a trend line that we have on the monthly and um, the reason why i'm not going to call it a trend line is because um, well you can see this push to the downside does not take off this low right here okay so this is not a trend line but nonetheless this is a significant line because this is in the monthly time frame notice how we have um this second touch and this is now the third touch on that particular line and um, well that is also coming in line line right around where we have the supply zone here on the daily time frame on the monthly time frame okay that led to the break of this level of structure this level of structure this level of structure and finally found support at the origin of this bullish move okay so well um the, you notice that the last time price came into that supply zone we got a nice push to the downside so right now price is coming into that supply zone right around where we have this um significant line so and we are slowly beginning to see the bs coming into this market so this is something to keep an eye on okay this might be um a signal for a very serious push to the downside okay maybe even towards these demand zones that we have um lower in this area so um that's the reason why i kind of mapped out this area let me zoom in so that you can get the clearer picture i just wanted to zoom out so that uh we can see what's going on all right now uh if we look here this uh is the picture i'm talking about so this is a demand zone right here okay that led to the break of this level of arm structure that we have on the left all right so this is significant we are running into supply all right we are running into supply plus more or less what i would consider to be eh, maybe a trend line okay and from there you notice that um the bears are slowly coming into this particular um pair so well right now maybe a push to the upside and then from here i will not be surprised to see price give me a push to the downside all right um, maybe from here then maybe you might get another reversal for another push to the upside that might take off this level for further continuations to the upside that's kind of what i'm seeing from the monthly time frame remember guys i am only going by what i am seeing someone else might be seeing something different uh, if you remember even last week i was paying attention heavily uh, at this particular demand zone that we have here on the monthly but right now based on what i'm seeing uh, this could easily be a level of um, resistance okay uh, a level of resistance that we have deep inside the supply zone okay this can be a level of resistance deep inside the supply zone that we have here on the monthly all right so something to keep an eye on in my opinion now um going into the uh the weekly time frame all right notice how the bears are coming in into this market look at this bearish candle that we have okay um here compared to this bullish candle and we form the pin bar only for the bears to come in again and continue pushing price heavily to the downside nonetheless we are still within a demand zone on the weekly time frame so you notice that this is just uh, an area of confusion if you are a demand and supply trader this is pretty much an area of confusion obviously you are trading off of supply on the monthly so you're probably going to be favoring uh, a bearish move 
However, this demand zone that we have on the weekly can easily cause some significant retracements like we saw in the past week. Okay, so something to keep an eye on in my own opinion. Um, I won't be surprised if price is to give me a, a push to the downside, let's say towards the uh, deeper into this uh, demand zone that we have on the weekly. And then from here, maybe even a serious push to the upside, maybe to retest that um, line that we have again and then from there if really this supply zone is going to hold i would expect price to give me a nice push to the downside so let's see how that goes zooming into the um, daily time frame what do we have uh on the daily time frame things actually become a little interesting okay um could this be a potential head and shoulder formation with this being the you know the left shoulder and this be the head that is now slowly forming who knows okay but uh, in my own opinion if we begin to get significant dips into this uh, weekly demand zone the blue box such that we get back all the way towards let's say 148 um, 75 area then it's most likely going to be looking like a head and shoulder and then from here it will mean that maybe upon any form of pullbacks towards this line that we have here then from here maybe let's say 153 50 area we might find significant resistance for further continuations to the downside. So this is something that I think we need to keep an eye on significantly. So I am not going to call bullish or bearish in this particular currency pair. Um, all I'm saying is we have to keep an eye on these potential formations that we have um, on these potential levels that we have on our charts. Um, should price at any particular time in this currency pair trade clearly below the low of this demand zone, then obviously start searching for short opportunities with every opportunity you get till we get into that demand zone on the monthly all right that's basically how the game plan should be or in an event that the bulls come into this market let's say we get back to this area and then we start to get significant breaks of structure in the smaller time frame then in my own opinion um, at any point we begin to let's say break this line um you know we can start searching for long opportunities these are going to be the highest probability trades as far as this particular currency pair is concerned but um in this area here it's a mixed feeling okay it's a low quality for both the bulls and the bears because price is trading between demand and supply all right so that's basically what i am seeing right now and remember this is between the daily and the weekly so we might still see some string you know some trading opportunities in the smaller time frame let's say the hourly the four hours time frame and whatnot so the fact that i'm saying that we should not um, really search for trades does not mean that we should not zoom into the smaller time frames and see small you know trading opportunities that present in the um, smaller time frames okay so um let's see how this goes i'm not calling any levels right now price is trading pretty much towards the um previous lows okay um let's see how it goes in my own opinion we have this um um falling channel so price can easily find its way towards this falling channel again to retest the bottom of this falling channel deep into that demand zone that we have on the daily and then from here price can easily give us a you know a push to the upside again who knows if we get a break to the downside that is green light in my own opinion to start searching for um you know short opportunities all right so that's basically um what i'm going to say for this particular currency pair now aud jpy australian dollar japanese yen on the monthly time frame not much going on we're slowly beginning to turn around um as you can see here we have this pretty pretty much indecision candle um pin bar okay and then bearish candle bearish engulfing and now this month is a you know full body beer candle so the beers are in this market all right now moving into the um the weekly time frame what do we have now on the weekly um we have this uh, demand zone right here price can easily find support and bounce off of this demand zone um not much and on the daily well in the event that price is to give us let's say a push to the upside i would like to see how you know price reacts off of this particular supply zone that we have in this area a reversal i'm going to be looking for an opportunity to go short for further continuations to the downside it all depends on how the market opens okay all right now moving into the um, next one swiss francs japanese yen i'm not going to waste any time on this one you guys already know my view on this pair um well very clearly i would love to see how price will give me a push into this area keeping an eye on that 118.50 
um, bullish confluence level that I'm seeing on this chart. Any reversals from there, I'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside. Now, uh, should we get a break of that level clearly? Then obviously I'll be looking for an opportunity to go short upon pullbacks to supply zones in the smaller time frames. Simple as that. Now, um, next up is going to be Euro Canadian dollar. Um, Euro card again behaved uh, as anticipated in the weekly time frame. Price is now continuing to give us um, a nice push to the upside. But um, slowly we are getting into um, a significant um, supply zone in my opinion. Uh, well, let's see how it goes. What I would love to see is for price to open and give us a push into this supply zone. And then from here, I would love to see some significant push to the downside into this demand zone area from where maybe the bulls might want to come in again to continue pushing the markets to the upside in my opinion towards the weekly supply zone. All right. So that's basically it for um, Euro Canadian dollar. Um, New Zealand US dollar um, again not much going on in this pair we got this bearish engulfing um, and then we have a push to the upside I didn't quite get to my levels like I pointed out last week but again there's not much we can do about it at the moment looking into the um, daily time frame what do we have um, some form of a uh, trend line um, price is um, bouncing off of some form of um, trend line so well what do we get here the price is kind of finding it difficult to take off this um, low that we have in this area so well if from here the bulls come into the markets um, I would love to see them at least a retest of 0.7100 area even possible let's say 0 0.7 to 125 um, area um, to retest the supply zone that we have here um, in the event that um, let's say this trend line continues to hold and we get a break to the downside then obviously the bears are in this market we adjust accordingly and start searching for um, supply zones in the smaller time frames for further continuations to the downside all right so that's basically my game plan for new zealand us dollar now british pounds and um, canadian dollar in the monthly time frame not much going into the weekly time frame uh not much okay um again this week closed a nice bullish candle above last week's high so that's um the bulls in this market in my opinion um so right now again pretty similar to the euro canadian dollar currency pair we have price coming pretty close into that um supply zone that we have here okay you can see the clear break of structure to the downside and this is where that sell started so uh well maybe a possible push to the upside into this supply zone and then from here i would love to see a very nice push to the downside into the origin of this demand zone okay that led to this break of structure right here so i would love to see price give me a dip into this demand zone maybe a push to the upside very quick push to the downside into this demand zone from where uh, price will have to make a decision any reversals to the upside i'll be looking for an opportunity to go long for further continuations to the upside all right uh in the event that this supply zone gets broken to the upside simple i continue to search for demand zones in the smaller time frames for further continuations to the upside if this demand zone gives way to the downside again search for short opportunities for a retest of the supply zones in the smaller time frames for further continuations to the downside now um that's it for uh british pounds canadian dollar next up is uh british pounds australian dollar um not much to say on this pair i think i just have a level on the daily price just continues to form higher highs and higher lows which in my opinion is indicative of an uptrend so well we have now taken up this level of structure um, I waited this week, but price did not quite give us that deep. Um, instead, we got another we got another push to the upside. So, well, if the market opens anytime we get a push into this demand zone, I'll be looking for reversal patterns for further continuations to the upside. All right, that's basically the game from plan for British pound some Australian dollar. Now, uh, Canadian dollar, Japanese yen. Well, this pair right now in the monthly time frame, not much. We are getting a very significant and um, bearish candle for the month. Um, zooming into the weekly time frame. We have this demand zone, like I pointed out um, earlier. Uh, price came pretty close again this week, manipulating the previous week's low. And um, well, I feel and I believe that um, slowly price is going to find its way deep into this uh, demand zone that we have on the weekly. And then from here, we we'll watch to see if there will be any form of um, reversals, okay, to the upside. So let's see how that goes. If we get any reversals from here, in my opinion, that's a high quality trade for further continuations to the upside for at least a potential retest of this previous swing high um, if that does not happen uh, well price can easily from here next week we can get a piece of this level upon pullbacks i'll be looking for opportunities to go short 
off of supply zones in the smaller time frame so anything can happen guys i like to give this kind of um reminder every time every now and then so that we don't get fixated on a particular view and that's the reason why i kind of try to share with you the rationale behind my forecast so that that way you see exactly what i am seeing that makes me think that the market is going to behave a certain way in the future okay all right so i'm um, now looking into the um, daily time frame what do we have again i continue to see this um clear supply zone here that has not been tested um so let's see how it goes maybe price might give us first of all when the market opens maybe a push to the downside into this uh so uh, demand zone that we have on the weekly and then from there you never know we might get a reversal to the upside into this uh supply zone that we have on the daily which can easily cause price to maybe give us a retracement or another further push to the downside only time can tell which one is going to happen all right so that's um basically it for um canadian dollar japanese yen now next up is um euro swiss francs Euro Swiss francs, I just want to give you guys a quick update. If you remember, I told you guys I'm keeping an eye on this particular pair for a potential um, move to the upside. Price is bouncing off of that um, demand zone that we have on the weekly. You can see how this week's candle closed a pin bar. Price basically bounced off of um, 1.08 institutional price level. And then from here, you can see we closed the week at 1.0854. So, well, I'm um, not yet seeing the kind of reversals that I want, but um, it is nice to see this pin bar right here. Uh, if from here any reversals that we get i'll be looking for opportunities to go long for further continuations to the upside like i pointed out last week now the last but not the least is some um, new zealand swiss francs i think one of my subscribers um wanted me to analyze this pair for them so i'm going to show you exactly what i am seeing on this particular currency pair right now now looking into their monthly time frame you can see that uh, well I am ignoring this particular spike to be honest with you i'm ignoring this spike um just joining these highs with these highs right here so you notice that this trend line got broken right here in momentum all right and the uh, price has given us a swing pullback to retest that trend line from above and you can see the rejection we are getting from it at the moment so let me zoom in so that you can see the picture clearer all right so you can see how price basically tapped that line perfect okay bouncing off of that particular trend line from above now and um, you can see how that corresponds with the demand zone that we have on the weekly all right so well in my opinion the bulls are in control in this market at least from the monthly time frame now moving into the um moving into the weekly time frame what do we have like i said earlier uh we have a clear demand zone you can see the clear break of structure that we have all right to the upside creating this demand zone in the process price is now dipping into this demand zone right now and you can see that we are slowly getting um, a push to the upside so also in the weekly you know the demand zone is holding the weekly demand zone is holding however not much information can be taken out from this week's um candle because of um this is basically an inside bar okay you can see this inside bar formation so not much information um all i can say is maybe a breakout is looming in one direction it could easy in any of the directions okay it could easily be a break to the downside which i do not see at the moment but anything is possible um but uh, most likely a break to the upside in my opinion um that would be an indication that the bulls are now taking over again and then upon any pullback in my opinion that would be high quality trades um, for further continuations to the upside at least that's what i am seeing in this particular um time frame from from the weekly now in the daily time frame what do we have again a supply zone comes into play okay um this is where the bulls at least started um you know showing their strength you can see how this nice sellout led to a break of this level of structure so this is a supply zone on the daily so well expect this level to you know give the bulls some issues um slowly but surely you can see that the bulls are coming into this market uh, on the daily all right um but again we are yet to get into this supply zone so what i would love to see maybe a push to the downside into this demand zone on the four hours time frame that will give us a push into this uh supply zone that we have on the daily maybe retesting this um trend line of the falling channel from where i think you know anybody who is long should maybe start taking profits because um you know anything can happen from here we this demand zone this supply zone can easily hold and price will give us another push to the downside but at the point at any point we get a very clear break above this supply zone taking off this previous high right here 
zoom into the smaller zooming into the smaller time frames to search for demand zones okay in my own opinion is going to be a very high quality trade for further continuations to the upside all right so this is pretty much um similar to the um euro swiss francs um, setup that i'm monitoring so i will also be keeping you guys posted if i do take this particular trade all right so that's basically it for the weekend analysis that i have i'll try my best to continue giving you guys some quality contents like i said earlier guys i'm really grateful for the 1000 subscribers that we have um reached at the moment thanks and have a nice weekend bye bye